telling the truth in public. And part of that truth telling was also communicating difficult ideas for people. And we were saying this was not about the police, this is about safety. If I ask you, where do you feel the most safe? Do you feel the most safe in a room full of police? I would not say that. The safety is about being around people you love. It's about being in places where there's food and shelter. <laughs> that is at its root what safety is. And then our fight has always been a fight about how do we make sure as many people as possible feel safe. That the police just become a proxy in the sense that for some people, they think about the only, some people that don't look like me, think about the police as like the people who bring safety. But for so many of us, the police aren't the epitome of safety. And when I think about what we use social media as, there's a way to push back. There's people of color, we've always faced these issues of erasure, and erasure often manifests in two ways. One is that even the story is never told us, told by everybody but us. And in this moment, we became the unerased. We literally became people who became our own storytellers, the people who were able to push our ideas out of ways that we here for were not able to do. That's the very least we could do because Sandra's mom is not getting her daughter back. Sandra's sister, Shantae Nita, she's not getting her, her sister back. So the least I can do is shut down this forum so you see us, so you see Sandra. And people shut up. The tide turns. And we spend pretty much the next six to eight months shutting down the Democratic Party forums and the Republican Party forums. Uh, obviously, the Republican Party forums are a little more dangerous. Many of our folks are shutting down, interrupting uh, Trump and his campaign trail, and they're being brutalized by the back vigilantes that he has emboldened. Well, what we try to do, and I think what we were successful at doing, is saying both of these parties have failed black people. Um, I'm not arguing that Hillary and Trump are the same. I want to be real clear. They are not. We, know, we knew what to do with the Hillary. We were going to shut shit down even if she became the president. <laughs> But the question becomes, what do we do with this president? 45, I will be calling him. <laughs> what do we do with 45? What do we do with him, his administration, and the people he's emboldened? November 8th happens. I want you just all remember where were you on November 8th? Did you have to lift your jaw up off the floor? I definitely did. It took me about two weeks to get out of the haze of depression. And uh, I realized, oh, this is different. I actually don't know how to fight fascism. No one's trained me in this. And what we've seen over the last two weeks how many executive orders now? 20, so far. Some of the most dangerous policies from reinstating the Dakota Access Pipeline and the Keystone Pipeline, both pipeline fights that were won by the people, reinstating them just like that, to the building of a wall on the U.S.-Mexico border, to creating a Muslim ban to putting a gag order of uh, women's health organizations across the world so they can no longer talk about abortion as, as women's rights across the world, we are witnessing the erosion of US democracy. And that could feel quite scary. I know I'm scared, I'm not gonna lie. I wake up every day scared. My partner is an immigrant. My 10-month-old child is a little black boy. I'm very frightened. And I ask, I'm asking him a lot of questions at this time. Did we do enough to stop Trump? Did our movement do enough to stop Trump? Did we do enough to educate our communities about the difference 
between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, between fascism and neoliberalism, did we do enough? And I can't answer those questions at this moment, but what I can answer is I know that I must stop, that I must stop Trump and his administration in the next four years. Priorities, remember? 
and put up his priorities. What was one of the biggest priorities he put out? Law and order. Law and order. Okay. So for those of us who need a little bit of um, reminders about what the law and order rhetoric comes from, where does the law and order rhetoric come from? Nixon. And who, who perpetuated it after Nixon? Reagan. And many would argue, so did Clinton. Right? He did. Pop on every corner. And so um, our work. Uh, our work right now, um, 45 is building a police state. Kid you not. A police state is when the military runs the government. 45 is building a police state, and so if that's what's happening, we have to fight the police state. And as we see um, some cities be defunded, but other- so I some highlighting uh, the, the horrific uh, abuses um, perpetrated against African Americans that has law enforcement here in the US. However, I am rather curious uh, about the uh, lack of information regarding um, the crimes uh, occurring within the black community, particularly violent crime murder. Um, only this weekend in Chicago, two young men lost their lives. Um, yeah, so so what, what strategies can we employ? <laughs> I'm really concerned about what's happening in terms of proportion of time we're allocating. Thousands of young men are dying. No, let him talk. Let him talk. So this is, we get this question all the time. And we, and we, so, well, we can, yeah. We get this question all the time, and we usually get it from white people. So there's a myth that black people don't care about black people. Um, and that's that's a huge myth. Wait, don't you want to hear my answer? Because you asked the question. So so in, in, listen. So in my answer, I can explain why that question is offensive. Okay. So the question's offensive because it um, uh, in it there's a critique as if black people don't care about black people. And black people care the most about our communities. Um, we show up the most. And so, what we continue to see with this rhetoric um, around black on black crime, which is a very dangerous rhetoric, rhetoric um, the rhetoric is used by the right to derail the conversations around law enforcement violence against black communities and to derail the conversation around anti black racism. Um, when we talk about harm and violence, harm and violence exists in every single community. If you look at the rates of harm and violence in white communities, it's actually higher than black communities. <laughs> harm and violence um, is uh, a part of how humans are with each other. Um, and so this idea that black people don't care about what's happening to us is <coughs> deeply untrue, it's deeply offensive, and it's deeply racist. Yeah. So, so, so let me continue, let me continue. Uh, let me continue. So, so we are already doing it. We are already doing it. We are in our communities. And really, the question becomes um, how little support the government gives some of those amazing organizations that are providing services in black communities. If we want to do something, we should be asking our local legislators, like I talked earlier, stop pouring money into law enforcement and put it into these communities that need the most. And I hope that from this you know, exchange, you have sort of switched how you are internalize this question and, and start asking different questions. Um, what the right has done a really good job at is blaming black people for the shit we've gone through. And I'm creating this analysis as if um, we are a victimized people that are violent and belligerent 
and have no idea how to crawl ourselves out of our own bed. That's actually untrue. It's deeply untrue. And the work of white people uh, in this moment, it's a good example, we're having a, we're having a, a good moment. Uh, the work of white people is to ask um, a different question, um, which is, um, why is this the question that I'm always asking? Um, I literally, literally hear this question in every audience I go to. Um, it's like there's an eco chamber that white people created, which is, it's true, I'm not, I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm just, this is the way communication happens, right? There's this eco chamber that's been created in the white community, which is, these black people are so upset about being killed by police, but they kill each other. That's deep. I don't get to be upset about being killed by the police, because we, we, there's harm and violence in our communities, that's not, a, that's not a good question. That's a racist question. And so when you, when you, get, when you see young black folks being angry and mad, it's because that question totally cuts away at their humanity. Nope, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm not <laughs>